You're listening to Sister Stargazers, celestial and terrestrial observations and advice from two real-life sisters. Welcome, fellow stargazers. Your sisters are in the house. Hi, Jude. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm super excited. It's the fall, autumn, autumnal equinox edition. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is our third equinox, fall equinox edition. It's very yeah. exciting. The Libra equinox. Yeah. Episode 106, Sunday, September 17th through Saturday, September 23rd. So in addition to the equinox, we've got some other aspects. So let's just launch in. Let's go. Yeah, Mercury is now direct as of 9.15, so Hallelujah. that's pretty exciting. Still yeah. moving out of shadow phase, but definitely not as many, hopefully, yes. not as many uh, glitches in tech or communication or over-communicating because you're just trying to make a point, like all of that can <laughs> be, you know, and so... Sunday the 17th, we have Venus square Jupiter. This is going to be happening, I think, twice because Venus is, was retrograde. Now she's coming back into this uh, square with Jupiter. Now Jupiter's retrograde. So this has been kind of on and off as an aspect pretty much when Venus was in mid-Leo. So that was probably right. mid-August. So Venus right. square Jupiter, you want to feel, you're feeling magnanimous, right? Right. But all of these feelings of optimism can also give you a point of distraction, Yep. It's now the time, though, to identify, if you haven't already, with Venus retrograde and Leo and now moving forward, your heart's desire. Where, where do you want to put your energy? Yes. And Jupiter is just putting that magnifying glass on it and saying, okay, what is it that you want to do? Is it to, you know, partner with someone? Is it to create a new vocation? Is it a new yep. hobby or an artistic pursuit or a new way of earning a living you know these are all yes. coming under venus so the square to jupiter is saying you know point of growth you know pay attention yeah yes you can go out and just blow all your money on something but but is it really <laughs> you know is, is, it's now the time is to really know what you need yes and yep. not be distracted from your path so that's yep. That's kind of a good point of uh, reference. And that Venus square Jupiter is going to be in effect for th four or five days. So maybe two days in front of September 17th, Sunday, and then a few days after. And then late in the day on September 17th, the moon will square Pluto. So the moon is in mm. the late degrees of Libra. So this is important. We don't, we don't always talk about the moon, but right. because the moon is in late Libra and because the sun is coming into the zero degree Libra, right? the fall equinox point, the moon is going to be squaring Pluto. So the late degree moon in Libra is going to be squaring the late degree Pluto in Capricorn. So this can bring up truthful feelings. This is kind okay. of kind of an edge, you know, that we're walking mm. with the moon between um, the very end of Libra and the very end of Capricorn. So there's a bit of tension and there's yep. a lot of feeling coming up because that Pluto is going back over places he was back in yes. 2021. So this is just something, again, to be mindful about. Yep. Not that it's going to last, it just might roll out into the yes. evening and kind of make for like a little tension. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So just want to be, just want to be tender and careful. And, and if things do come up, just wait for the, you know, wait for the tension to subside or, or right. release before taking any action and just be right. patient. I think that's a good watchword with this particular aspect, moon square Pluto. Okay. On September 18th, Venus is going to be at its brightest, its greatest brightness. I love that. Yeah, this is amazing. In the morning pre-dawn sky, best time to watch Venus will be a couple of hours before sunrise in the east, and it will be visible low in the southeast sky. Yeah. It's going to resemble a crescent moon. This is also interesting because she has made her conjunction she's pulling away from the sun so she's going to look like a crescent moon when nice. looking through steady binoculars or a telescope yeah it's worth the early morning get up if you can i think i've seen it once or twice and it's really spectacular it's just amazing yeah and she was in the evening sky now she's made her conjunction to the sun she's now transitioned into the morning sky awesome she'll be visible 
um, through February and March of 2024. Mm. And on March 20th, which is when the next equinox is, right. she will reach a half moon phase. So she'll look like a half moon. So Fantastic. just something to put on your calendars for March 2024. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The moon right now is making a conjunction to Ceres in Scorpio. And then the moon trines Saturn and sextiles Mercury. So this is also kind of a, a little bit of a kind of a packed up, stacked up aspect configuration because the moon in Scorpio is uh, is akin to that moon square Pluto. So the moon mm. in Scorpio now, early Scorpio, is going to be water sign. It's going to be trining up to Saturn in Pisces. So again, this opportunity for deep feeling. Yeah. But the difference here is that this moon trine Saturn is going to sextile Mercury in Virgo. So you have the opportunity to express those feelings to get them out. Nice. Yeah. So all of those feelings that you might be feeling on the evening of Sunday, the 17th, as you move into the 18th, you might be able to get them down, talk it through. You know, it's a good aspect for that. Okay. On Tuesday the 19th, the sun is opposite Neptune. So this is a great time for more for dreaming than for decision making. And Neptune yeah. is in its own sign of Pisces. The sun is in Virgo. Virgo is very practical. Pisces is not practical. It's more of a right. dream, dream dreamy. state. Yeah, dreamy. So you have these opposing forces happening at the same time yeah so that's why dreaming is better right now than decision making although the sun will you know your assertive sun self especially if you're virgo will want to make those decisions and be practical mm -hmm. and efficient and see things through and get through that list and but it's not going to happen um if you try to yeah. push it you'll find that the decisions that you made were wrong or that you hadn't mm. factored in certain things that were really critical Right. That something was obscured. Right. So this is a good time to just, again, kind of kick back, record your dreams, be inspired, but not take any action at the moment because you're right. not going to have the clarity. Yep. Yep. The other aspect of the day on the Tuesday, the 19th, that's kind of feeding into that is that Mars is making a quincunx to Jupiter. So even though you want to push and see something through, your energy is not going to be yep. used practically because this quincunx is, it's not a trine. It's not right, an opposition. Right. It's 150. Right. So it's kind of this weird thing where you feel like you, you really should make progress, but you can't make progress. Yeah. Yeah. But you feel like you should. <laughs> so anyway, that's the quincunx kind of fighting with itself. So yes. You're, you're sensing that the opportunities are there, the timing is right, but you're you're off. You're just a little off. So instead, kind of direct this energy into things that you know yes. you can apply some energy to because you know the outcome. Yes. It's not something where you want to push onto a big dream, right? Where there's a lot of X factors. So you just, you know, move yes. a little bit forward with something that you know is heading in the right direction instead of pushing something that may be too big exactly yeah yeah so um we're moving up to the equinox on saturday yeah. the uh, 23rd yeah at 2 50 a.m eastern yeah. time but before we get there right we have a first quarter moon so i just want to say a little bit about the equinox because this will give us a flavor a sense of prognostication so we can okay. kind of look at this chart of this equinox chart and see out for the next four months right this chart has the day before has a first quarter moon mm. which is a square from the sun to the moon from 29 degrees virgo to 29 degrees sagittarius mm. so that's a late degree full-on virgo <laughs> sun like that's an anorectic degree, the 29th degree of the sign 
it takes all of the qualities and kind of supercharges yeah. them into yeah. this little package at the very end of any sign. The 29th degree of any sign is going to be like this this little yeah. bundle of vibrating oomph. Yeah, super, super concentrated. Yeah. So I would say that this first quarter moon is like lots of like you want to get stuff done. You're trying to get stuff done. But the moon is squaring the sun. So the feeling nature is in Sagittarius, also at 29 degrees Sagittarius, which is in the ballpark of the galactic center, uh, if I'm right. not yes. mistaken. I think that's 27 degrees is the galactic center. 26 and some change. So it's 27 degrees Sagittarius. Right. So we're in this ballpark of like huge ideas, huge evolutionary, mm -hmm. you know, input downloads coming in, mm -hmm. like n knowing stuff. You're not sure how you know it. It's just at odds with yeah. your everyday life. Yeah. Making a list, checking it twice, putting things in order, yes. making sure that there's communication. Yes. The thing with this kind of square is that there's a sense that there's no time to get it done. Like there's this, right. like there's this impulsion to like get stuff done. Yes. With this first quarter moon square, you know, that is something that will be part of this equinox picture. Which is the next three months until yes. the solstice. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I'm mentioning and, and spending so much time talking about this no, first great. quarter moon yeah. because it, it really balls up all of like the Virgo energy. And if we look at the chart, the moon is in Sagittarius, the sun is in Virgo. Right. So what else is in Virgo still is uh, Mercury is in Virgo. Oh my gosh, yeah. So so Mercury is it's in a sign that it rules. So so lot a lot of communication. There's yeah. also and this is also playing out in the chart and and has been holding for a number of weeks, but we have the north node in Aries conjunct Eris, south node in Libra conjunct Haumea. Yes. And also conjunct Ceres which is at one degree or two degrees Scorpio. So there's these are opposing energies. Yes. So on one side, you've got this push for just individuation and yep. the, the sovereignty of the individual. Right, right. On the South Note side in Libra, you're really wanting things to be nice and normal and courteous and polite yes. and yeah, diplomatic, diplomatic yep. and whoa, yep. all of that which is awesome but we've got to find a new way yeah. so this yeah. homea is about regeneration it's about coming to terms with what's real yeah and reinventing re not so much relearning but recreating basically yeah. or creating something new out of nothing right so that there's this sense that you know all the old ways that we've patterned ourselves around working within a social structure or working within a relationship do not apply anymore yes yes yeah. something where the rights or the the power of the individual is more there's more of a, a focus on that in terms of the evolutionary growth north node conjunct eris standing yeah. up for what is right yeah not so much going along with what is old yes or what has been right and then at the same time, trying to navigate this with a new way. But again, that Haumea is at 29 degrees of Libra. Libra, yep. So it's really wanting to, you know, take all of the social customs and kindness and hospitality yes. and and it's just all of these you know ways of navigating in a, in a society right yeah and trying to bundle those repackage those but it's at the end of libra so it's not gonna work we'd have to completely release yeah and find some place in the middle and the nodes are going to be here for a while, aren't they? Yeah, the nodes are just, they just entered right. Aries and Libra. Libra. So North Node in Aries, out of Scorpio and Taurus. And they travel backwards, so mm -hmm. they'll travel backwards through these signs. Yes. Okay, yeah. For about a, about a year, right? More than a year? About or? 18, yeah, 18 yeah. months. Yeah, okay. So at the same time, 
that we're getting this opposition to these points. We're also getting a trine from Vesta at two degrees of Cancer down to Ceres at two degrees of Scorpio. Mm. There's a grand trine in water, basically. So there's a lot of emotion that has to do with concern and feeling and how do we navigate these sometimes inherited feelings or inherited prejudices, you know, yes, how do we navigate yes. these these feelings that may not be ours? That's Ceres in Scorpio, but that's also Saturn in Pisces, these ancestral patterns, yeah. these unconscious yeah. patterns of feeling. And then that trines going back up. It's a big flow going back up to Vesta two degrees of cancer, family patterns. So there's a lot of mm. um, opportunity for feeling the coming three months that may put you at odds with groups yeah. that you might have been affiliated with in the past. Yes, yep. Because there's a new point of orientation now, and that's the North Node in Aries, conjunct Aries, which is really saying you've got to strike out on your own. You've got to come to terms with what's right for you. And will the placement of those nodes in your chart tell you which houses it might mostly affect? Yeah, like absolutely. work, family? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check where 25 degrees Libra is for the south node. And Haumea is going to be right next to it, 29 degrees Libra. And right next to Haumea is going to be 2 degrees of Scorpio. Series, so right. that cusp right there between Libra and Scorpio is going to be activated as well as the Aries, 25 degrees, yeah. North Node Aries, 24 degrees Aries for Aries. Excellent. Those are all going to be activated. Wow. And then we also have, within Orb, we have Chiron, mm. our place of vulnerability in Aries, which talks about how we've been... Mm, how we've been wounded in a way, you know, yeah. like how we've been shamed, how we've been wounded, how we've been made vulnerable as an individual, as a person. But that's coming up for healing right now. Yeah. As it's been in this conjunction, it's wider now, but Chiron's moving backwards, but it was in a more of a conjunction with Eris. Mm. So as we try to formulate what's important to us, what we stand for, what's what's right, what yeah. we have to come to terms with what's right for us as an individual, rather than what's right for us in terms of fitting into a group. It's not going to be an easy pass you know it's not going to be it's not going to be like a one and done because this is holding here for a bit it's part of this equinox picture what, yes. we, what we're sort of riding into yes okay or what's traveling with us yes and as well as that grand trine mm, mm. in water the thing is that we have our feelings but we need a bigger picture we need a bigger picture to help us move through this yeah. and that's that's the moon where the moon is located which is okay. going to be that first quarter square mm. and acknowledge them in you as well as in others. Yes. Right. Yep. And it's a, it's a learning process. Right. In yeah. Sagittarius with the moon in Sagittarius. So, and with that square back to the sun, it, it's also about a point of tension. You're not yep. always going to agree. Yep. I did pull a card and I asked specifically, you know, for this week with an equinox, give me a card for an equinox and the six, of pentacles came up and there's literally a person holding a scale which is libra oh wow yeah it's a card of balance and it talks about i'm i'm looking at the pathworking the tarot book by lisa robertson which i really like and it says it shows us both sides of the coin so there's a figure with a balance in one hand and then this figure is dropping coins into a a person who's sort of kneeling at their feet and you can think of it as maybe it's you know less fortunate people than this figure but the idea is about showing both sides of the coin it could be an act of giving and it can be an act of allowing and receiving and that being in the flow of both gathering your blessings in one hand and sharing blessings with the other as well as there's a nice gentle grounding energy about this card which allows you to take your time and get into the swing of a new habit. There's no rush to get this balance right the first time, and the scales allow for trial and error without judgment and ridicule. Take your time and ease into the energy that this card offers, specifically around material being, but it could be time, it could be knowledge, it could be money. But I think it speaks to what you're talking about, this opposition of what's right for self, how you fit into the group. I don't know, thoughts? 
No, that sounds really right on. And that card is, it can also be about actually getting funding for something, mm, but mm -hmm. also it comes with strings attached, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of that in there. So you, you get something, but then you have to give something. Sounds a little bit like the square. Yeah. You know, what are you going to have to give up to move forward? The money might be nice, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Maybe, yeah. well, maybe what else, what else is there? You know, it's not money. Money isn't always the answer either, right. you know. No, and it could yeah. be, yeah, I mean, it could be a gift of something or... Right. Because it's pentacles, it speaks more to practical kind of monetary or value, things of value. I also love the pentacles because you're talking about all these trines and things and these the pentacles literally make triangles points connecting which i yes. think is interesting too yeah that's all i got yeah okay. any, uh, we should probably i'm sure there's much more we didn't do a sabian symbol for the I equinox good, sarah i don't have i think just getting out there and seeing venus is gonna be yes and venus rules libra mm -hmm. so you can you can kind of use her as your you know kind of pull her out of your back pocket you know as yep. a way to um to balance your own scales you know yes. to just tap in to some beauty well she's the five-pointed star isn't she Venus? yes absolutely. there you go so while she's out there at her greatest brightness her greatest brightness isn't that amazing yes, i love it's that like super bright yeah yeah southeast sky early morning she'll look yeah. like a crescent moon so that'll mm. give us that'll give us some good juju to work with excellent chi yes to harness <laughs> Thanks, Jude. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Listeners, thank you for writing in. You can connect with us at connect at sisterstargazers.com. We really love hearing from you, all your questions, comments, and ideas. Don't forget Monday nights, 7 p.m. on WMPG.org for the half hour deep dive astrology show. And a happy equinox, everyone. Yeah, happy equinox. Yay! Take care. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Sister Stargazers. Let us know what worked for you this week. Find us on Facebook and post a comment at Sister Stargazers.